The son of a b actually did it. I guess we were all wrong after all, huh? Respect, bro. What's up guys, Alec Ankiri here. And it looks like Jeff Cavalier of AthleteX.com has proven us all wrong, myself included. You know, the haters sitting around all day sipping on our haterade. But in Jeff's latest video, he showed us all up and he deadlifted 425 solid ass pounds. That's real pounds, not a single fake weight to be seen. So here's what I wanna say today, two things. Firstly, Good shit, man. Respect. No jokes, no wordplay, no nothing. Just respect. That's 425 pounds from the floor to lockout, and that is pretty freaking heavy. So like I said, respect. End of story. I'm not going to knock that shit. I might do a technique analysis of it so that other people can learn from it. You know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, which is part and parcel with any heavy lift. But it's 425 pounds on the bar. It's real weight. It's heavy. It's solid. And it's no more bullshit, so I respect that. And I like the little bar slam at the end there too. By the way, that was pretty badass. And now, on to the second thing that I want to address today. So all that being said, did old J-Cav just answer the fake weights issue once and for all? Did he shit all over all of us non-believers who are calling him out for fake weights? Did he actually complete my deadlift challenge? Was there really a day where he could deadlift 495 pounds for an easy double? <laughs> Not so fast, people. The weights were still fake on all of those 500 pound deadlifts. Now I'm pushing myself up to, I believe it's uh, 491. Now as we get up here touching sort of almost at 500 pounds, every single one of them that we have footage of from before was fake. It's not 500 pounds on the bar there. And faking those lifts to sell training programs and boost his brand, lifts that he was never capable of performing, not then and not now, is still fraud. So here, now this past week, Jeff deadlifts 425 pounds, and it's real this time. This is 425 pounds on the bar, or at least something really close to that. And nobody's gonna say otherwise, and nobody's gonna argue, because it's obvious this time that there's actually weight on the bar. You can simply watch the lift and make that determination. Just like if you have any level of experience in the weight room, you can watch the old 500 pound deadlifts and easily spot them as fake. It is what it is. So then does this 425 pound deadlift disprove or silence any of the arguments that Curly Next or myself have made these past couple of months? Of course not. For one thing, as I just noted, being someone in Jeff's position and faking those lifts before was still fraud. And that fraud still hasn't even been acknowledged, let alone has an apology been issued to all the consumers who purchased his training programs thinking that it would make them strong like Jeff. For another thing, this lift, this lift that I guess was supposed to be viewed as some kind of an act of vindication, really kind of proves the opposite. And not that we needed more proof, but it really proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that the old lifts were fake. Jeff was never capable of deadlifting five plates at all, let alone doing it for two easy reps. For starters, 425 pounds is not 500 pounds. And the lift here is not even remotely comparable to the ones shown before. So comments like these need to just stop right fucking now. This is an incredible degree of confirmation bias on display here. You people are convincing yourselves to see exactly what you want to see while literally ignoring what is actually directly in front of your face. And it's actually a little bit concerning that you have that ability to that much of a degree. Here, let's review the evidence as it actually stands. He went from five plates for an easy double with good bar speed, a relatively neutral spine, a controlled eccentric, a ridiculously easy easy transition over the knees, a super easy lockout, and no belt, no belt, to a 425 pound single with much slower bar speed, a very large degree of lumbar rounding, a much more wobbly bar path, a much more difficult transition over the knees, and the addition of a belt. So if the old video was actually five plates, I would have to say that based on the bar speed and the external level of exertion that's present here, that that person could deadlift at least 
550 pounds for a single, but probably more than that, to be honest. That set looks like a pretty comfy double at roughly 85 to maybe 87% of one rep max tops. And then based on how this 425 pound single looked, I would say that it's somewhere in the vicinity of 93 to 95% of one rep max. So that puts the estimated max here around 445 pounds or maybe 455 pounds if he was able to see red and fully commit to the lift. Either way, it is an incredibly substantial strength drop off from before to now. If I go to a steakhouse and I order a 24 ounce ribeye and then a few minutes later the waiter brings me a 12 ounce sirloin, I'm going to have a problem with that and I assume that most of you guys would too. Well, Jeff's beltless five plate double was a 24 ounce ribeye and this belted 425 pound single is a 12 ounce sirloin. They're not at all the same thing. The former is both much heavier and much higher tier than the latter. So unless you're willing to tell me that these two steaks are also interchangeable, please stop trying to equate these lifts. And the people acting as though the difference between 450 and 550 is somehow inconsequential are simply revealing their ignorance as it pertains to strength training. Most adult men are going to get to 400 pounds on the deadlift pretty easily with a proper training program. But then the story is going to change. The low hanging fruit will be gone. The wheat will separate itself from the chaff. And guess what? Most of you are not going to get to 500, let alone 550 or more. Jeff weighs a buck 75. He maintains a damn near emaciated level of leanness year round. He does not know how to perform a proper deadlift, indicating that he never spent an appreciable amount of time training the exercise, nor does he know how to set up a proper training program for strength. So unless he's on PEDs, there's no permutation of reality where a person with those stats and that training history is pulling 550 plus. And you can miss me with that motherfucking bullshit. And people are going to say, oh, you're just a hater. It's been five years and he's old now. So obviously he's going to be weaker than he was when he was younger. But for one thing, that's not really necessarily true, especially not for somebody like Jeff who trains all the time and it's only what, 45 years old or something like that? He's not a decrepit old man. Freaking Terrell Owens just beat Tyreek Hill in a 100 yard dash with just a 10 yard head start and he's 46 I think or something like that. Now I know the average age of Jeff's audience is probably only 17, but mid 40s is not exactly grandpa status just yet guys. He may be a little bit weaker, but you're talking a loss of 100 plus pounds on the deadlift. That's not a little bit weaker. That's a lot of bit weaker. Plus his form actually got far worse here, even though the weight is supposedly substantially lighter and he's doing fewer reps, which doesn't really make too much sense. An established motor pattern is pretty much an established motor pattern. And I have a sneaking feeling that he's been practicing some heavy deadlifts for these last couple months now. So even if he was rusty, it would have come back to him by now. So the only real explanation for why his form would have actually deteriorated to such an extent from the old five plate lifts to now is that he's venturing into new territories that he hasn't yet explored in terms of weight. The old five plate lifts were actually three plates and we've seen that he's able to maintain decent form in the low 300s. But as soon as it starts creeping up near 400, everything basically falls apart. Which is honestly fucking whatever. His form isn't the best, but it's not the worst either. And it can be worked with and improved substantially from here. I would never knock somebody for trying to get better and trying to get stronger. But my problem is that this is such a bullshit way of addressing the situation. I mean, God damn, dude. Just 
actually address it or just fucking continue to ignore it like you had been doing. But this pretend response is such a bitch move. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just a bitch move. I'm sorry. Same as that comment that he left on Doucette's video before. You don't have to say my name. You don't have to say Curling's name. You don't have to say Doucette's name. You don't have to say anybody's name. No one gives a shit, but you do have to admit it. The weights were fake. So just admit it. You couldn't deadlift 500 pounds then, and you can't do it now, and you most certainly couldn't do it for two freaking reps. And unfortunately, you lied about it. And now you're using a lift that is not at all on a comparable level. You're trying to feed your audience a 12 ounce sirloin when they ordered a 24 ounce ribeye to con them into believing that you had it in you all along or some other misguided notion along that line. And it's obviously working for you as we can see by some of the comments on that latest video, which is a little bit sad. But the fact that you would even post this lift at all as if it's some sort of vindication of the allegations at hand shows that either you think your audience is dumber than fucking cardboard, which is pretty sad, or you know so little about strength training that you actually believe that a difficult belted 425 pound single rep deadlift is somehow comparable to an easy beltless double with 495 pounds, which is also pretty sad. So either way, in case anyone was wondering, it's pretty fucking sad. And none of this changes the fact that the old lifts were fake. And none of this changes the fact that your past behavior was fraudulent. All that really does is show that you apparently simply lack the courage to own up to it. It was a mistake. People make mistakes. But the fact is, you refuse to own up to that mistake because what? It might cause your ego a temporary bruise? I mean, it seems pretty clear at this point that even if you came out and said it was all bullshit and you lied straight to everyone's faces just to sell a few more training programs and boost your brand a little bit, that it wouldn't affect your bottom line. You basically lead a cult at this point and the majority of your Jonestown-like followers are going to hang on to every single word that you say. And the minority is going to get bullied into submission by the rest of them anyway. And the ones who don't allow themselves to get bullied into submission will just have their voice censored by Jeff himself. But the Athlean brand has snowballed into an unstoppable monster. And I retract what I said in my previous videos. Even if Jeff came out right now and owned the entirety of Fake Weight Gate, I don't believe that it would impact his company's bottom line in any meaningful way at all at this point. It simply has too much momentum to be halted. So money is not what's at stake here, which leads me to conclude the only thing stopping him from owning the truth is pure, unadulterated ego, which is ironic coming from this guy. Don't just lift heavy for the sake of ego. Pure, unadulterated ego. And if you're a follower of Jeff's and you fell for this ploy, I sincerely hope that you will take a minute to reevaluate the situation because this response doesn't disprove anything or change anything at all. Taken in isolation, it only reinforces everything that's been alleged up to this point. And when coupled with the protracted silence that preceded it, which was obviously time that was used to train the deadlift, along with the massive censorship of genuine comments on his channel asking about fake weights, it's all really pretty damning. And to me, it's a sad state of affairs that people are willing to be duped like that, even when all the evidence is staring them in the face. If you're a Cavalier fan, something like this is honestly an insult to your intelligence and frankly you should be offended by it. As well, I just think that anyone who thinks this latest video changes anything at all really should try to reevaluate the situation. I implore you to reevaluate the situation through a more objective lens and from there simply demand accountability and honesty. It's really not not that hard, especially for someone in his position. He has such a massive following and so much support at this point, he could literally change the industry here if he wanted to. He doesn't need to clickbait people anymore, which he does incessantly anyway. He doesn't need to embellish his physical feats anymore. He doesn't need to lie and he doesn't need to bullshit. He could literally just be honest with people and he would still be the top dog. Demand from them that they demand honesty and accountability, not just from him, but from all of us. He could change the game to the point where the fitness consumers weren't willing to accept bullshit anymore as they are now. And that 
would be awesome. Personally, I would love that because one thing that I cannot do is bullshit people out of their money. If I'm selling you something, it's because I believe in it. So a fitness industry that was no longer built on bullshit would be music to my fucking ears. And he has the means and the support to accomplish all that. And it wouldn't negatively impact him at all to do so either. But for some reason, he chooses not to. He chooses to dance around the elephant in the room. He he chooses to continue pulling the wool over people's eyes. He chooses to make sure that the old guard stays firmly in place. And he chooses not to own up to his past mistakes, even though they could really just be framed as a learning experience of sorts. And he massively disrespects his followers in the process. People who have propped him up to the top and invested their hard earned money and their time in him. In reality, he needs them more than they need him. If Jeff was gone, he would be replaced in a heartbeat. He needs you guys more than you need him. And by refusing to acknowledge the truth, he is slapping you, the people who have invested in his information, right in the motherfucking face. And I don't get it, honestly, I don't. And like I said before, I respect that deadlift. And I respect the fact that he's been putting in work, which is something that you can't fake. But this pretend acknowledgement, this fake acknowledgement doesn't really change anything. It's just a cheap, disingenuous business move. It allows Jeff to skirt owning up to his mistakes, pretending like he's acknowledged anything with this cheap retort. It lets him preserve his massive ego without any single dents at all, and it still convinces enough people that this whole thing was just a bunch of noise that was being blown out of proportion by haters such as myself. That's not really the case, but if as a fan base you're willing to have your intelligence blatantly insulted like this, to be fed a sugar-coated turd of this magnitude and swallow down every bite of it without a word of protest, then I don't really know what to tell you anymore because I simply cannot relate to you in any way, shape, or form. But if you're a true fan of Jeff's and not just another yes man, if you're not just another lemming-like member of the Athlete X cult whose ability to view this situation through an objective lens has been swaddled under impenetrable layer after layer of cognitive dissonance, if you're able to see past all the bullshit that's been laid out and peddled by people like Pure Bullfit and Every Damn Day Fit, and you want to see Jeff do the right thing because you're a true fan. And as a true fan, you demand that he shows you the same level of reverence and respect that you show him. Then simply demand accountability. Demand an apology for the lying. Demand an apology for the fraud. And do your best not to let your brothers be fooled by this latest ploy. They might not like what you have to say at first, but you guys, Jeff's true fans are the only ones that can set him back on the righteous path. The big influencers, they don't have the spine for it. They don't have the nuts for it. They're not going to influence anything here. So it's up to the community. It's up to you guys to demand it. And that process absolutely cannot begin until the wrongs have been righted. And that starts with admitting that faking those lifts was wrong and fraudulent in the first place. Jeff is where he is today in part due to those fake lifts. That's no bull, that's just reality. And you may say that he deserves to be where he is, which can lead you down the shaky logical path of concluding that this whole thing somehow doesn't matter because we're all better off with Jeff at the top anyway. But the ends don't justify the means here. And if Jeff hadn't faked those lifts, maybe someone else who had just as much good information to offer, but who didn't actively commit fraud to get noticed, would be the top dog today. Would that make YouTube Fitness a better place than it is today? Maybe, but maybe not. No one can say for sure. But what we can say for sure is that Jeff is the top dog today. Right now, he actively chased that carrot. No one handed it to him. He sought it out of his own accord and he managed to catch it. And along with it comes the responsibility of accountability. The responsibility of accountability. It is his personal responsibility to hold himself accountable to a high degree of honesty and integrity and to show respect to the 10.5 million people who now prop him up due to the position that he actively sought to attain. And now that he's lost his way, only his true fans can demand this from him. So 
I leave it up to you guys. Anyway, that's all I got for today, guys. Please be sure to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And definitely leave me some love in the comments down below. And if you guys think that Jeff should actually address the fact that he used fake weights instead of continuing to skirt around the issue with pretend acknowledgments like this, then be sure to share this video around as well. Anyway, keep training hard, and I'll catch you guys next time.